after our discussion about division of polynomials, let us now proceed to factoring polynomials using the remainder and factor theorems. These two concepts are new to us, but we are going to be introduced to these two concepts as we go along our discussion. Let us have a simple first example. So what are the factors of x squared plus 6x plus 8? We are familiar with the ways and means to factor this polynomial, no? So we basically just have two x's here. So if we multiply, we get x squared. And then to get the two factors, since we both have plus here, so we also have both plus here, we think of two numbers. When multiplied, we get 8. And when added, we get 6. So basically, those two numbers are 4 and 2. So x plus 4 and x plus 2 are the factors of x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now let us have this short some kind of an experiment about the factors and the given polynomial. Let's have, for instance, let's take into consideration the first factor, x plus 4. So let us do synthetic division, um, considering x squared plus 6x plus 8 as our dividend and x plus 4 as our divisor. So we'll have negative 4 here. And then we will copy the numerical coefficients of the terms of the dividend. So we have 1, 6, 8. If you want an explicit um, discussion on synthetic division, I will um, link the video in the description below and as a card above. So since we have already set up our synthetic division process, we can now proceed to our division. We'll have here, bring down 1, negative 4. We have here 2, negative 8, and then 0. Let us observe our synthetic division process. As you can see, we have here a 0 remainder. Why did we have a 0 remainder? Because x plus 4 is one of the factors of x squared plus 6x plus 8. If we are going to compose our quotient, we will notice that this is x plus 2, the other factor, x plus 2. Now, let us try using x plus 2 as the divisor to our given polynomial x squared plus 6x plus 8. So, we have here negative 2 and then we copy the numerical coefficients of the terms of the dividend. So we have 1, 6, 8. Then let us now proceed to our division. So we have here 1 times negative 2. That's negative 2. This is going to be 4 times negative 2. That's negative 8. And we have again 0. Again, why did we have 0 as our remainder? Because x plus 2 is one of the factors of x squared plus 6x plus 8. If we are going to compose our quotient, we will notice that it is the other factor, which is x plus 4. So what are our observations? Basically, the observations that we get in this little experiment is that if we divide a polynomial by its factor, the remainder is 0. And the quotient is the other factor. Let us have a more complicated example number 2. So we have to show that x minus 1 is a factor of x cubed minus 7x plus 6. If it is, factor the polynomial completely. So, there are two things that this problem asks from us. First is that we have to show 
that this polynomial x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial. And if x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial here, then we have to factor this polynomial completely. This is where we are going to be introduced to our two new concepts. The concept of the factor theorem and the remainder theorem. So the factor theorem, if the remainder comes out to be 0, then x minus c is a factor of p of x. This factor theorem is actually our observation in example number 1. So if we divide two polynomials and the remainder is 0, then the divisor is a factor of the dividend. How do we do that? So we can either use our standard synthetic division process here or another concept called the remainder theorem. So if the polynomial p of x is divided by x minus c, then the remainder is p of c. For this video, we are going to use both synthetic division and remainder theorem just to compare if synthetic division and remainder theorem will be useful for us. But there is no need to use both methods if you are just solving your activities. So let us take our um, polynomial. So we have here x cubed minus 7x plus 6 and x minus 1. So we will treat x minus 1 as our divisor and this polynomial as our dividend. So we have here positive 1. We have here 1, 0, negative 7, positive 6. I will not explicitly discuss anymore why there is a 0 there. Just check out the video in the description below. So we have here 1. This is a 1. This is 1. This is still 1. This is negative 6. That's negative 6 and 0. As you can see, we have a 0 remainder if we considered using synthetic division. That being said, it is safe to say that x minus 1 is a factor of x cubed minus 7x plus 6. Let us write it. So therefore, x minus 1 is a factor of x cubed minus 7x plus 6. Again, this is synthetic division. Let's write it here. Synthetic division. And we have here the remainder theorem. How do we do remainder theorem? Sorry. So we take our p of x. Our p of x is x cubed minus 7x plus 6. And then to solve for the remainder, we take p of 1. That is the constant term of the divisor, but we change its sign. So we have here, instead of x, we write 1. So 1 cubed minus 7 times 1 plus 6. So we have here 1 cubed is 1 minus 7 plus 6. If you ever have something like this, I suggest you, um, the, the, the terms with like signs, you add or you do the operation to that. So we have 1 plus 6, that is 7, minus 7. So P of 1 is 0. Therefore, the remainder is also 0. That being said, by the remainder theorem also, then x minus 1 is a factor of x cubed minus 7x plus 6. So you can just choose one of the two methods for showing that a given polynomial is a factor of another polynomial. Now that we have shown that x minus 1 is a factor of x cubed minus 7x plus 6, let us now factor the polynomial completely. This is where 
synthetic division has an edge over the remainder theorem because after identifying where, whether a certain polynomial is a factor of another polynomial, the remainder theorem ends there. But the usability of the synthetic division process is still very good. So we will continue this. So we have our synthetic division here. I'll write it here. And we have already found out that x minus 1 is a factor of our given polynomial because the remainder is 0. Let us now compose our quotient. The quotient will be x squared plus x minus 6. This is a quadratic function. So we can now just factor this out. So the factors are, so we have here both x's. Then we have a negative 6 and a positive 1. So both are to be taken into consideration. So we will think of two numbers. When multiplied, we get negative 6. So I think that's going to be negative 3 and positive 2. And when added, we get a positive 1. But if we add these two, negative 3 plus 2, we get a negative 1. So that's wrong. So we change the signs here. So we, we have a negative 3. This will become a positive 3. And this will now become a negative 2. If we multiply negative 3 and, sorry, positive 3 and negative 2, we get negative 6. If we add negative 3, sorry, positive 3 and negative 2, we get a positive 1. So that is now correct. So what are the factors of this given polynomial? So the factors are, let's paste it here. So we'll now write our final answer in factoring this given polynomial. So the factors are x minus 1, x plus 3, and x minus 2. Let's have a more complex example than this one. So what are the factors of x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6? So in example number 2, we have something to start on, and that is x minus 1. This time around, we don't know where to start. Let's go back to our example number 2. In example number 2, I'll use a blue highlighter. We have this positive 1 to start our synthetic division process. It happens that the remainder is 0, therefore we can proceed using this, these terms as the numerical coefficients of our quotient and eventually factoring the polynomial completely. However, in example number 3, we do not have that. So we are going to introduce again a new concept which is called the rational zero theorem. So the rational zero theorem, if a polynomial function written in standard form has integer coefficients, then any rational zero must be in the form positive negative p over q, where p is a factor of the constant term and q is a factor of the leading coefficient. So basically, we just have to get the factors of the constant term and the factors of the leading coefficient. Let's go back to our given polynomial. This is obviously in standard form. And obviously also, we have integer coefficients. So, let's have our constant term and our leading coefficient, which is here. Our 1 right here. So, what are the factors of 6. Let's write here um, factors of 6. So we have a positive negative 1, of course, a positive negative 2, of course, a positive negative 3, and a positive negative 6. How about the factors of 1? We have just positive negative 1 because that's just a 1. 
Now, 6 is our constant term. So, these terms all here, all terms here are considered P. And all terms here are considered Q. So, P over Q. So, what are the possible rational zeros of the given polynomial function? So, the possible zeros are, let us list it here, positive negative 1 over positive negative 1. That's positive negative 1. Positive negative 2 over positive negative 1. Actually, everything we will just copy because everything is just divided by positive negative 1. So if you ever have here a positive negative 2, then all, everything here, all terms here will be divided by positive negative 2. Now, these terms right here, I'm going to use the blue highlighter. These are the possible zeros. These are the terms that we are going to try in our synthetic division process in hopes to get a zero remainder. So let us try, for example, positive 3. I'll put positive 3 in my division box. And I will copy all the numerical coefficients of my polynomial. So I will have here 1, negative 2, negative 5, and positive 6. Let us do our synthetic division now in hopes to get a remainder of 0. Because if we get a remainder of 0, then x minus 3, because we have here a plus 3, right? So we have x minus 3, is a factor of our given polynomial. So let's try. So we have here 1. We have here 3. So that's positive 1. We have here 3. That's negative 2. That's negative 6. And we have a 0. Yes, we have a 0. Therefore, x minus 3 is one of the factors. Let us have our green highlighter. This is one of the factors now. But this represents one of the factors now. So, after that, let us compose our quotient. Since we have a cubic polynomial here, and we have tried one term, so that's less one degree. So this is now of the second degree. So we have x squared plus x minus 2. Factor this out. So the factors are x minus 2. Sorry, that's x plus 2. And x minus 1. So what are now the factors of our given polynomial? So the given polynomials factors are, let's just remove this and this. Let's put it here. So the given polynomials factors are, we have x minus 3. Where did I get x minus 3? The green highlighted term. So we have now, x plus 2 and x minus 1. 